Heck of a college football game. I'm really proud of our guys for their resiliency and um, execution down the stretch. But, uh, you know, we cannot. We got, we got a lot of things to clean up. And um, I saw some improvement. I really, really did. Um, but we, we've got to improve on the penalties. And we, we've got to improve our special teams play. And we certainly have to improve uh, our, our gap integrity defensively. And we, we got to find ways to defeat man-to-man -man coverage offensively. So, um, you know, this we got a, an opportunity uh, to, to still have a, a really, really good season. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we were down either pregame and or during the game. You know, Jake Smith uh, aggravated his hamstring during pregame warm-up. Uh, Caden Stearns was battling a, a foot injury all week. Tried to go during pregame warm-up, could not. Roshan Johnson aggravated, uh, re-aggravated his shoulder. Chris Brown, the same with his shoulder, and, and Josh Thompson uh, with his. So, um, again, extremely proud of the fight and resiliency. Uh, but we, we know we, we've got uh, a long, long way to go. We've got a lot to clean up, but we've also got a lot of our season left ahead of us and we're going to use this bye week to continue to teach continue to simplify and then hopefully heal up and be ready to go two weeks from today when uh, baylor comes to austin questions we'll start with anwar go ahead hey coach um let me just ask you uh, real quick, the, the, the penalties and sometimes the, the team has seemed a little bit undisciplined at, at times. What do you attribute that to? What do you, what do you think of that, that issue is? I, um, I, I would have to address each one of them individually. I, I think um, most of it is, uh, if, if I had to guess, um, you know, not trusting your technique, not trusting your training, and, you know, kind of going outside of doing things the, the way that you know, we coach our players to do. And, you know, that comes with repetition. And we, we've got to continually uh, rep the things that we are deficient at right now so that uh, with that muscle memory uh, comes, you know, the ability, you know, the, the old adage, you don't practice till you get it right. You practice till you can't get it wrong. And uh, we, we've got to find a way in this crazy year to continue uh, to, to get the necessary reps so uh, that it becomes second nature for our players. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, Tom, what, what is going through your mind when you're watching your guys basically beat themselves? You know, Kerstetter's penalty, Angulau's mistakes. Bushevsky gets the punt blocked. I mean, some of these things are self-inflicted wounds. What, what do you think of that stuff? Well, a lot of them are, are self-inflicted wounds. Um, and I'm, I'm disappointed. Again, it's my job to make sure that they don't happen. I, 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 I do want to tell you guys, uh, we had a great week of practice. Probably the best Sunday uh, after a loss that, that we've ever had in our program. There were tons of accountability. Uh, tons of um, maturity and really, really uh, had, a, had a great week of practice. Now, what, what we have to do is we have to find a way, find a way uh, mentally to do the things, to translate uh, what we work on and we execute at a very high level in practice uh, to do that in a game. And... Um, you know, at, at, that's all I know how to do. Uh, that's all we know how to do is go back to work, continue to rep the things that need to get repped to the point to where um, we're not out of position, to the point where our feet are in the right place, to the point where our hands are in the right place, to the point where we're in the right gap, to the point where we're blocking the right people. And, yeah, I mean, the list goes on and on. And, um, you know, we didn't have enough of that today, believe it or not. 
I, I, I did feel like we had more of it than, than certainly last week against TCU, uh, but the, the result uh, didn't, didn't bear the fruit of that because we still had too many. Bob, go ahead. Tom, did you give consideration to going for two at the end of regulation or in overtime? And on that front, how do you make that decision? Do you look at how gassed your defense is? What was your what was your thought of thought uh, thought process through that? Uh, yeah, certainly thought about it. Talked about it each time we scored there at the end, as well as in in overtime. And felt like our de or our offense was playing really really well. Our defense had just held them to a three and out when we got and we got the ball back, got a decent punt return and, and went right down the field and scored. And so uh, certainly at the end of regulation, we all felt like, um, you know, that, that we were playing good enough defensively. We'd found a groove. We had definitely found a groove offensively and that taking this thing into overtime. And then we score at first, you know, we had the ball first in overtime and, uh, you know, I, I we wanted to make sure that, you know, we didn't put our defense in a bad spot and um, we were able, you know, trying to, to obviously keep them out of the end zone and, and felt like, especially the way we, we had played there the last couple series in the, in regulation, that that, that was the, the right thing to do. What about in that second overtime, just real quick? Yeah, thought about it again, I'm sure much like Lincoln did as well. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we felt like, our, our best opportunity was to continue to play ball. Kirk, go ahead. Yeah, Tommy, uh, you had a lot of trouble running the ball and protecting Sam before the two touchdown comeback. Uh, do you feel like Oklahoma controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides for most of the game? And, and why would that be? Uh, yes, I do. Um, they got really good players uh, on both sides of the ball and really good coaches. And I, I don't know the answer as to why specifically right now uh, without watching the film, but um, uh, the answer to did they control it, I, I think we all know the answer is yes. Was that the most disappointing thing about this game because it just controls so much? Very much. Dennis, go ahead. Okay, uh, what are your emotions for Sam right now? Obviously the 18 game, you know, he was one of the heroes today. I don't know what else he could have done, but you know th this may be it for him against Oklahoma. What are your emotions for him right now? Crushed, absolutely crushed. Um, that we as a family didn't do enough collectively um, for him to finish his career against these guys the way that uh, he deserved to, and. Part of being a part of a family, and um, I feel like we all let him down. And, but we, we don't get to play the game again. Uh, what, what we can do uh, is make sure that that him and everybody else that has earned uh, the right uh, to win at the the highest level around here uh, that we we give them that opportunity and. Uh, again, you know, we're, we're four games into uh, what hopefully is a, you know, 11, 12 game season. And um, we've, we've still got a lot to play for. And I think our, our players know that, especially in a year like this. Uh, nobody, nobody knows how this year is going to end up. So our, our job is to make sure that uh, we get him and everybody else on that team that has earned it. Uh, the opportunity to go one and zero against Baylor. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Tom. I'm not sure if you had a good look at it from the sidelines. Could you tell what happened on the Bushevsky block punt, and then just special teams in general? I know you touched on it briefly, but uh, I guess your level of frustration or what you feel you guys can realistically do before the Baylor game to clean up all the issues on special teams right now. Yeah, we 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 didn't have the right leverage uh, on a block, and uh, you know to block the guy that got a hand on it and the, the punter held on to the football too long. And uh, we, we've, we've got to, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times we drilled uh, our punt team this week. I mean, I, it's, it is uncountable. And uh, so we, we've got to go back to the drawing board. Uh, and, you know, this is 
something that that has never happened in the, the six years that that we have had this uh, pump protection uh, but it's happening now and we're, we're not going to hide from it and we're going to we're going to find a way to fix it um and and then we, we got we got a cover too you know i mean everybody wants to talk about the the block which they should uh, we lost by a touchdown but you know, we gave up a 40 yard return in the second half. That was, could have been at that point, a, a, a backbreaker. And it's, it's very frustrating, very frustrating. Cedric, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Tom, uh, you speak of accountability. Uh, are you seeing the right degree of that on game day? And also, are you seeing the right degree of pain after a loss? having to look looked in their eyes after this game in the locker room. Yes, and yes. Danny, go ahead. Tom, I'm going back to the punting issue. Would you consider switching punters and how much of this these problems are on coaching? Oh, they're all on coaching. Um, you know, when players don't execute uh, coaches have to find ways to uh, allow them to. And the, the answer to the, the first part of that question, no, we, we don't. Our backup punter is Cameron Dicker uh, right now. So uh, we, we've got to find a way to, uh, you know, make sure that this, this is it. And we thought we had, and we didn't, obviously. And so it's up to us as coaches uh, to, to make sure that we get it fixed. Got time for the few last questions that we're in queue. We'll um, start with John High. Coach, the past couple of weeks you've been talking about the self-inflicting issues, the things you got to clean up. I know you feel like you have a good team. Why do you feel like you have a good team? I think we've got a solid core of, of leaders that um, – do things the right way and you know are we deficient in certain areas yeah we, we are and we, we know what those areas are and and we're going to continue to get those areas better uh, and and or find uh, replacements for for those that um we can't get better and you know that'll be job number one moving forward this week. But um, yeah, I do. Anytime you've got guys on your team like Taquan Graham and Sam Ellinger uh, and Derek Kerstetter uh, and, and, you know, Roshan Johnson was hurt and, and he was right in the middle of, of all of the, uh, all of the team team talks that, that we had either heading into the fourth quarter or into overtime. And uh, so we, we've got a, a good group of core individuals that, that we've got some guys around them that uh, we need to accelerate their growth and, and their learning uh, ASAP. And I know it, it sounds like a broken record. Um, and, you know, that, that acceleration is, is going to come with time. And the, the beauty of this is, is we've got a, a bye week uh, this week uh, for us to uh, really dive into. Again, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of it will be repeats of, of last week of, of uh, again, just trying like heck to make sure guys are fitting the right gap and running the right route, uh, blocking the right guy. Um, you know, we, we have we have got to, uh, and I always go back to, you know, when, when you have players making mistakes, it's on coaches to either uh, coach it again, like I said, till you can't get it wrong or simplify or don't do it. And, you know, maybe I, I don't have the right answer right now, uh, not after a five hour game in 90 degree heat uh, and triple overtime that we just lost to our rivals. But um, I know that our players deserve answers and I'll have them for them. Um, in very short time. Chip, go ahead. Tom, why can't your team run the ball consistently? 
Well, I, I would think it's a, a number of things. I think, um, you know, we have got to improve uh, up front. Uh, and, you know, we, we've got we've got who we got and we got to get them better and we've got to major in the things that, that they can do. Uh, and then, you know, we've, we've got to uh, understand as coaches as well that, you know, it, it gets, it gets hard, you know, when you're down two scores and you feel like it's, things are kind of slipping away from you a little bit uh, to, to stick with, you know, one yard, two yard, zero yard runs. Um, but, you know, the, the recipe for a good running team is to continue to run the football. Uh, and, you know, and, and I've been in Mike's shoes. I have uh, when nothing you call feels like it's working. And so we've got to get our guys better up front. And we've got to make sure that our, our backs are, are seeing and reading the, the right people and hitting the right holes. Your last ones, Joe, and then Cedric. On the radio, uh, you said after the game, it's a shame we have to go on. Matt, we have to go fast on offense to be effective. Um, if that's how your offense is effective, why is that not a sustainable method throughout the course of the game? Well, uh, we we went three and out numerous times, taking about 22 seconds off the clock. And on a day like today, against a really good offense like Oklahoma. Um, you know, you, you need to play complimentary football and, uh, I, I get it that we got to move the ball and maybe that's it. And, and maybe, uh, you know, maybe we turn into one of those teams that tries to win games 65 to 55, you know, that's, that's not what I envision. And I don't think that's what anybody envisions around here. Uh, so we, we've got to find a way to be able to at a, a normal tempo, sustain drives and stay ahead of the, the chains. And we haven't done that here in the last couple of weeks. Last one, Cedric. Um, we know you're an analytical thinker. Um, uh, on your way home, when you're sitting there and your thoughts, what do you think is the biggest question or two you're going to ask yourself as a head coach of the University of Texas? How do we get a group of guys that want to be great um, to translate their play in practice uh, to the games. Uh, that's job number one right now. I, I, I told you, we, we had a really good week, really good week, unbelievable Sunday, and a really good week uh, moving forward Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And uh, I saw some of that improvement. I, I know it's really hard because of the outcome right now uh, to see the bright spots but no there, there were some and we've got to build on those and but also we've got to make sure that we figure out a way uh, as coaches uh, to again you you've only got a, a, a certain a finite amount of reps uh, in practice and uh, but you have a thousand, two thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand reps you can take mentally, uh, and so I mean it's it's all hands on deck right now to figure out uh, how we get the quality, get enough reps to the point where again on game day uh, we can't get things wrong, but but also we we've got to understand we got to keep this team healthy and we can't go out and have a four hour day junction boys practice, uh, you know, in the, the shape and, and condition that our team is. So um, we're, we're going to continue to examine that and figure out creative ways. We, we did some of that this week. We actually um, scrapped the, I don't, I don't know if you guys wrote about it or not, um, but you know, we, we did very, uh, very minimal or at least compared to, to normal years a scout team work and, and we had our twos uh, service our ones on, on offense and defense just to try to get a, uh, a better picture, you know, cause we're, we're just, so, we're down so many numbers. I mean, Vernon Broughton, uh, poor kid was, was having to play scout team offensive tackle at times. And 
with Byron Vaughn's and having to play scout team tight end at times. And, you know, we're just not getting the quality look uh, for our defense and, and, our, and definitely our offense uh, that they need. So we, we adjusted. And, uh, you know, maybe the answer is to do even more of that. And, and um, you know, but I, I, I don't have that, that answer right now uh, this soon after the game. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you.